Hi there, and welcome back to What If, as today we will be looking into additional possible chapters that might come out for Dead by Daylight. In this episode of What If, we will be essentially creating a blueprint of what a chapter or paragraph revolving around a particular franchise may look like. The franchise we will be looking at in this episode is and we'll be coming up with a location, killer, and survivor that would fit into the game. Location Hope's Peak Academy A government-sanctioned, co-ed, private city center high school with boarding facilities, the school was founded in order to develop and research the talents of exceptional high school-age children known as Ultimates. Unlike a typical high school, the students did not have to participate in entrance exams, but instead were scouted by the school itself as ultimate experts in their field with the exception of the ultimate lucky student whose talent was determined by winning a lottery draw. Rather than typical school studies, students of Hope's Peak Academy were encouraged to develop their talents. While the school was originally exclusive to those with these ultimate abilities, the school later developed a preparatory school-style second facility upon the school grounds known as the Reserve Course in order to fund the school's research. Reserve Course students were not scouted and instead took an entrance exam in order to attend. Successful applicants had to pay a high tuition fee, which would in turn fund the education of the Ultimates. Although the reserve course technically functioned as a normal, if exclusive, high school, the opportunity to attend was highly competitive due to the brand recognition of the school and the main course's reputation for producing future pioneers. This school would have been an amazing opportunity for any to attend, were it not for the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history, often shortened to the tragedy. Due to this event, Hope's Peak changed from a symbol of hope to a prison of despair for all who remain trapped within its walls. Killer Monokuma The Despair While just the puppet of a true mastermind, nothing can pull out dread and despair in quite the same way that Monokuma can. A stuffed robotic bear and the self-proclaimed headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, Monokuma acts as the voice of those who instigate the events of the Danganronpa series. Though Monokuma has existed in more than one timeline, its overall mannerisms and desires pushed upon it by its controller are generally similar, if not the same, each time. Often described as easygoing and cheerful, Monokuma is as sinister as they come. Its ever-encompassing desire for despair is what led to the creation of the Killing School Life, where the ultimate students were forced to live a communal lifestyle amongst each other, whether that be within Hope's Peak Academy, Jabberwock Island, or elsewhere. The only way to leave this communal life was to disrupt the peace by killing another classmate and enacting the graduation clause. In order for a student to graduate, they not only must kill another student, they must get away with the murder. After a certain amount of time after a murder occurs, a class trial would begin, and all participants would have to try and pinpoint who the murderer, also known as the Blacken, was. If they were successful, the Blacken would receive their just punishment, and would be executed in a manner fitting their ultimate ability. However, if the Blameless fingered the wrong person, then everyone besides the Blackened would be executed. While the original Mastermind's end goal was eventually thwarted and the survivors managed to escape, true despair is not so easily quashed, and many more trials would need to be overcome in the future. Monokuma, despite almost always showing up in its standard bear fashion, has plenty of costumes to choose from, as he's played a few different roles in the game so far. But if we want to talk about legendary outfits, the Monocubs are definitely a good choice, as well as Usami from the first sequel, Goodbye Despair. Granted, if you have Usami, you must also have her signature catchphrase. Love, love! Monokuma's unique abilities are Mass Produced and Punishment Time. For Mass Produced, Monokuma's body is a mass-produced robotic bear, being controlled elsewhere by a devious mastermind, so it doesn't matter if a few bodies get scrapped. With this ability, Monokuma can set a timer on his body, 
causing him to start beeping. After a delay, he'll explode, downing any survivor, damaging any generator, and breaking any pallet and destructible wall within a short distance of him. After its body has been destroyed, the killer will be able to respawn at one of four Monokuma birthing machines somewhere on the map. The machines can be temporarily sabotaged by survivors to prevent the killer from spawning in that location. If a birthing machine is sabotaged, the killer will be unable to spawn there for 120 seconds. No more than two birthing machines can be disabled at any given time, however. If two birthing machines are disabled, and then a third is disabled after that, the first birthing machine will automatically fully repair. That isn't the full extent of Monokuma's abilities, though. With Monokuma, if all generators have been powered, and there are more than two survivors, and all survivors have been hooked at least once, a killing game begins. During the killing game, the end game collapse begins immediately, and neither door can be opened. If a player attempts to open the hatch with a key, they will find that it is locked with a golden padlock and cannot be opened. The only way to open the exit gates is for one survivor to kill another. To do this, three Monokuma killing objects will appear around the procedural. The killing object puts the survivor into a killer mode. While in killer mode, the survivor moves at 115% movement speed, and upon finding another survivor, instantly kill them with the action button. The survivor who is the victim does not have to be injured for this to occur. Other than this, the survivor will still retain all normal abilities. If two survivors have killing objects, and both use their killing objects within a precise time frame, the two will struggle for 5 seconds. The survivor that taps the action button the most during these 5 seconds will be the one that kills the other. If by chance, both survivors happen to hit the button the exact same number of times, the winner will be randomly chosen. Sorry. Not every game ends fairly. The killed survivor is counted as a sacrifice for the killer. After the survivor has been killed, the other survivor gains the blackened status effect. A survivor that has the blackened status effect may be instantly downed and killed by Monokuma. There is no way to remove the blackened status effect. After one survivor has been killed in this manner, all exit gates will immediately become unblocked and will be powered by 95% allowing them to be opened normally. Any survivor that has a killing object at this time will revert to normal, immediately losing their killing objects. If Monokuma finds a survivor with a killing object during this time, he cannot injure or down them. Attempting to attack the survivor will cause the survivor to be warped to another part of the map. If Monokuma is within a certain distance of a survivor when they start killing another, he will immediately be warped away by the entity after the killing ends so that the survivor cannot be immediately killed. Along with this despair though, there must be hope. Along with the killing objects hidden somewhere on the map, lying on the ground, will be an invisible golden key. This key, if located and picked up, will highlight the hatch to the person holding it and allow an escape. If the hatch is opened and is closed by the killer, the killing game instantly ends and all exit gates can be opened normally. Monokuma's first perk is... Thrills Kills Monokuma gains power from the pain and misery of others with Thrills Kills. Every time a survivor is sacrificed before the in-game collapse has begun, two new totems will spawn randomly on the map. If a hex perk has already been destroyed in the match, then one of the new totems will rejuvenate the missing hex perk. If multiple hex perks have been destroyed, then the rejuvenated perk will be chosen at random. Monokuma's second perk is... Pay the Penalty. If a survivor has been taken off the hook, and is attacked within a certain time period, the person who unhooked them will take the damage instead. This perk will deactivate if the killer remains within a 32 meter radius of the hook while there are no survivors within that 32 meter radius. If it becomes deactivated, it will not be able to be used again for another 120 seconds. Monokuma's final perk is... Pets. Betrayal. Friends are your strongest ally in the procedural, until they become your worst enemy. With Hex Betrayal, if survivors remain within an 8 meter radius of each other for more than 10 seconds, their aura will be revealed by the killer. 
This aura immediately dissipates after they leave the 8 meter radius. This timer is paused if the survivor within the radius is performing a healing action and will not reveal an unhooked survivor for 60 seconds after they have been removed from a hook. Okay, time for a commercial break. Now, Danganronpa has its fair share of characters. Many who have interesting personalities and unique things that they could bring to the procedural. It took a bit of time to go through all of the possible characters, but I was eventually able to narrow it down and select one out of the many possible candidates. The one I chose is a little different and probably not the one that most would choose, but I honestly think out of all of the characters here, this one has a unique perspective to bring. Kaede Akamatsu, the ultimate pianist. Kaede was just a normal high school student when Kaede was practically born an amazing prodigy, able to learn and master the piano from a very young age. She won competitions, wrote unique compositions, and became renowned the world over as the ultimate pianist. As such, when she was scouted by, as such, when she applied to Hope's Peak Academy, there was no doubt she would be accepted. She no longer remembers any time she may have spent at the Academy, of her friends, nor of the ultimate hunt that drove her into hiding. These things were nothing but flashes of memories that became sidelined when she learned about the killing game that she and her other ultimates were going to be forced to participate in. Though as scared as any other student, Kaede had one thing on her side, hope. Hope for her friends, and hope that they would all escape alive. With this, she worked with her fellow ultimates to try and discover the mastermind behind the killing game, and put a permanent end to their schemes. While the hope that everyone would survive didn't fully pan out the way she wanted, her addition to the Entity's collection will bring this hope to the survivors, as Kaede considers them her new friends, ones that she will do anything to protect, even if it costs her her life. So if you've played the Danganronpa series, you might wonder why I chose Kaede over all of the other protagonists, and the reason is that Kaede's backstory is a bit more tragic and tainted than the others, and feels more in line with the character that the entity might take. Most of the protagonists in Danganronpa tend to be squeaky clean and milk toast. Very vanilla protagonists, while Kaede is very much her own person, with her own goals and personality. As far as alternate costumes, well, there are a lot. If we were to talk legendaries and I were to make some suggestions, Kyoko Kirigiri, Junko Inoshima, and heck, even Celestia Ludenberg or Sayaka Maizono would be very striking legendary outfits, and those are just from the very first game. But really, there is one legendary outfit that I want in this game, and it might not work for Kaede, but someone needs a Sakura skin immediately. <laughs> Kaede's first perk is, I believe in you. If Kaede is in the dying state, or is on the hook, all other survivors can recover from the dying state if they are knocked down. A side effect of this is that Kaede cannot recover from the dying state on her own if she has this perk, even if another perk would normally allow her to do so. This includes if another survivor has the perk I Believe in You. Any player that recovers from the dying state while I Believe You is active will award altruism points to Kaede. Kaede's second perk is, I get it. If Kaede is the last survivor in a procedural, and the in-game collapse has begun, a special chest with a key in it will spawn in the procedural. This chest will have a special golden key inside, similar to the one that spawns if the killing game begins. This key cannot be dropped once obtained, nor can it be knocked out of her hand. While in her possession, the key will highlight the location of the hatch. If all locations a chest could spawn in the procedural are already taken, this perk automatically deactivates. If Kaede manages to escape without opening the hatch while the key is still in her possession, it will immediately disappear after the match is over. Kaede's third perk is Perjury. With this perk, Kaede can encourage others and provide an endurance even the killer cannot stop. With Perjury, if Kaede is in a match, and the killer attacks a survivor in a way that would put them instantly into the dying state due to a special attack or perk. All other characters are immune to being instantly downed for the next 120 seconds. Afterwards, 
This perk goes on cooldown for an additional 120 seconds. This perk is deactivated for all other survivors if Kaede is killed or sacrificed. And that's it for this episode of What If? I hope you enjoyed it. I of course have a teaser for the next episode at the end of this video, so stick around for that. Special thanks to Jack Freeman again for supporting me on Patreon. If you would like to support me there, you can do so by using the following links down below. If you can't, or simply don't want to support me that way, I completely understand. You can still help me out by liking this video and subscribing if you haven't so far. I've been having fun with these episodes, and the next one will be a little different. But I don't think there will be any objections. At least I hope there won't be. So, as always, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Say where I reach my shame when I call your name. So please don't set me free. I'm as heavy as can be. I will do you.